All right, guys, let's go ahead and continue talking about some gas laws. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, Gay-Lussac's law, and this has to deal with uh, pressure and temperature. Now, remember that pressure is the result of the collision of molecules with a container wall, and the force and the frequency of the collision depends on the average kinetic energy, and the average kin kinetic energy depends on temperature. So if the temperature increases, the collisions occur more often, and with a higher force, so our pressure must also increase. Okay, Now, we see the formal definition of Gay-Lussac's law is that the pressure of a fixed mass of gas at a constant volume, so we see that in our Boyle's law, the temperature was constant, Charles' law, we saw the pressure was constant. Here, in Gay-Lussac's law, we're seeing that our volume is constant, and it varies directly, meaning it's directly proportional with the Kelvin temperature. Remember, all temperatures have to be in the Kelvin scale. Now, we see that as we look at it and we draw a graph for it, it creates a constant. And that constant for a certain sample of gas that depends on the mass of the gas and the volume. Okay, so we're going to see a directly proportional, so we're going to see that straight line like we did with uh, Charles's law. Now, if we have a set of new conditions for the same sample of gas, they will also have the same constant, so we can predict what we have. So this is the equation for our Charles law. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Now, let's go ahead and let's work a problem. The gas in an aerosol can is at a pressure of, we see we have three atmospheres at 25 degrees Celsius. Now the directions on the can warn the user not to keep the can in a place where the temperature exceeds 52 degrees Celsius. And what would the gas pressure be in the can at 52 degrees Celsius? So just like the last gas law problems, we've got to write down what we have. So we have an initial pressure, or a uh, P1, of 3 atmospheres. And we see we have a temperature, a T1, uh, of 25 degrees Celsius, which we convert that to Kelvin by adding 273.15, and we get 298.15 Kelvin. Okay, and then we have a secondary temperature, or a T2, of... 52 degrees Celsius, which is 325.15 Kelvin. Okay, we're searching for the pressure, or P2. So we go ahead and we set up our equation where we have our P1 all over T1 equals P2 all over T2. From here, we treat it just like Charles' Law. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. We're going to get P1T2 equals P2T1. Okay, and we're solving for P2, so in this we would just divide by T1, and T1 would cancel out, and we would just plug everything in from here. Written all nice and neat, it will look like this. Okay, and we should get an answer of right around 3.27. If you round the significant figures, it's 3.3 atmospheres. We see that our Kelvin temperatures, those uh, units will cancel, and we're left with the unit of atmospheres. Now, one way that we can remember this uh, is by using our triangle. Uh, so, we know that if we have our triangle, PVT, Boyle's going to be on top, where we have pressure and volume and temperature is held constant. Charles will be on the right, where we have volume and temperature and pressure is held constant. In Gay-Lussac's, we will have pressure and temperature with our volume on the right, which is um, constant. Okay, Just a simple way we can remember it. Now moving on to the combined gas law, um, usually gas, gases often change in temperature, pressure, and volume all at the same time, and the other gas laws can be combined into one gas law, which is the combined gas law, and it has a relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature of a fixed amount of gas, okay, and we see that it has this equation. Now often I get asked, do you have to memorize all of the equations? Uh, no, not really. If you memorize the combined gas law, you memorize them all. Because uh, we know that in Boyle's law, temperature is held constant. So if it's held constant, we can just mark it out. We're not dealing with it. And there you go. There's Boyle's law. Now, if we are dealing with um, Charles's law, we know that pressure is held constant. So we mark out pressure. And there we go. There's Charles's law. Now, in Gay-Lussac's law, it's the same thing. If we uh, get rid of volume, we see that we will have Gay-Lussac's law. So if you can memorize the combined gas law, you memorize all the gas laws. Now let's go ahead and work a problem. 
A helium filled balloon has a volume of 50 liters at 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. What volume will it have at 0.855 atmospheres and 10 degrees Celsius? So we box what we're given and we're going to go ahead and we're going to write that down. Now we see that we have an initial volume or a V1 of uh, 50 liters. We have a T1 of 25 degrees Celsius which we know that has to be in Kelvin, so it's 298.15 Kelvin. And then we have a pressure, or a P1, of 1.08 atmospheres. Okay, and it gives us a uh, secondary pressure, or a P2, of 0 0.855 atmospheres. And another temperature, which is a T2, of uh, 10 plus 273.15 is... 283.15 Kelvin. And we are searching for a volume, so V2. So we set up our equation where we have P1, V1 all over T1 equals P2, V2 all over T2. And just like the gas laws before us with fractions, we always cross multiply. So we're going to end up with our P1, V1, T2, which equals P2, V2, T1. Okay, and to get V2 by itself, we divide both sides by P2, T1. And we see that they cancel out. We're left with V2 by itself. We plug everything in, and that will give us our answer. And written all nice and neat, it looks like this. And we see that after we write everything in and plug it into a calculator, you should get something right around 59.98, which we rounded significant figures, and it would round up to 60. We see that the units cancel. We're left with liters. Liters is our final unit, which is volume. Now, another example. It says a balloon containing 5.5 uh, liters of air at 25 degrees Celsius and 755 torr is put, in a, uh, put at the bottom of the ocean. The new temperature is 4 degrees Celsius, and the new volume is 2,300 milliliters. What is the new pressure? Now, the first thing we have to realize is that our volumes are in different units. Okay, When we work it out, they have to be in the same unit. So we look at it and we see that our V1 is going to be 5.5 liters. Our um, temperature, our T1, is going to be 298.15 Kelvin. And our pressure, or our P1, is going to be 755 torr. Now, we need our V2 which our V2 is uh, 2,300 milliliters, which to get it to liters, all we have to do is move the decimal place three times and we get 2.3 uh, liters. So now they're in the same unit, we can work with them. And it gives us a T2 of, we add four to 273.15 and we get 277.15 Kelvin. And we are searching for the new pressure or P2. Okay, so we have our equation P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 all over T2. So we take this, cross multiply here, we're going to get uh, P2 V2 T1, and we're going to get P1 V1 T2. And to get P2 by itself, we divide both sides by V2 T1. And they cancel each other out. Let me plug in our givens to the equation, and we should get the correct answer which we see is going to be um, right around 2,000 torr. It, I think it comes out to be uh, 1,600 and uh, right around there, which we rounded the correct significant figures, and it's 2,000 torr.